You're pissing me off. That's what you're doing. I know what you're thinking. Are you out of your fucking mind? When you pray for rain, you gotta deal with the mud, too. Who's this guy? Who are you? Yeah? Huh? What are you, a farmer? <laughs> I'll be back. Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? This film is written and directed by Thomas M. Wright. Joel Edgerton and Sean Harris are in the leading roles. Other attractions are, Jada Alberts, Steve Muzakis, Fletcher Humphreys, Matthew Sunderland, Alan Dukes, and Cormac Wright. This psychological crime thriller follows an investigation of a child abduction and murder case. This film is based on the book The Sting. The Undercover Operation That Caught Daniel Morcombe's Killer Written by Kate Kiriakou. This book is inspired by the murder investigation of Daniel Morcombe, an Australian boy who was abducted and killed from Queensland in 2003 when he was 13 years old. The film starts with one guy named Paul initiates a conversation with fellow traveller Henry during a bus ride to Queensland. Henry is a native Queenslander and Paul is visiting. A friendship strikes between them and Henry helps Paul a few times like purchasing a vehicle and shifting out of the motel where Paul was staying. In return Paul offers Henry a job and promises to introduce him to friend Mark. Henry says except violence he is okay with any job. Next day Mark picks up Henry without Paul saying Paul couldn't make it. On the way they meet Ken and Mark speaks with him and collects a packet and hands it over to Henry. Henry gets a rough idea about the nature of his new job. Tell me why for work. Nah. I need an address for the transfer of ownership. I've got a PO box you can use. Thanks. I might need to shift out of the motel. I came out here to do a job for some people. And there's a mate of mine, Mark. I'll talk to him about you. I don't do violence. Where's Paul? Get in. <sighs> in the next scene, we come to know the real identity of Mark. He is not a gangster but an undercover cop who is working on an abduction and murder case of a teenager named James Liston. I'm a sworn member of the Western Australian Police in the investigation into the abduction and murder of James Liston. The next day Mark picks up Henry and introduces to his immediate boss Gary. There Gary raises objection about the dressing style of Henry, also comments that Henry looks like a criminal and suggests getting some proper clothes. Then Gary mentions that due to Paul's previous issues with law, they have to resettle him so there is a new opening in the organization and Henry can join them. Henry agrees. While going back Mark interrogates Henry whether he did the time before and if he is completely honest with the organization about his past face-offs with the law. Henry answers that he was in and out a few times for some petty crimes. This is Henry Teig. Scary. Get yourself some proper clothes. You look like a fucking criminal. I ask you if you've done time before. Yeah, man. Before. In and out a few times, nothing serious. At home Mark scolds at his kid for breaking a glass and later apologizes to him. He seems worried about his kid's safety, maybe due to the nature of the case he is handling. What did you do that for? I didn't mean it. Sorry, I swear to you. The next day well-dressed Henry meets Mark and they again visit Gary. Gary cautions them to clean up their mobile phones. Then he hands over some money and passport to Mark instructing him to give it to Paul and have a drink with him because Paul is about to leave for London as relocation. Mark and Henry then meet Paul and hand over the money and passport. There Paul tells Henry to trust Mark and the guys in the organization. Further he says if you are honest with these guys you will be looked after. By all these events, Henry grows some trust over Mark and the guys. <laughs> God, I was fucking, you look good, come on. What's going on here? Sit down. Hand over your phones. What, what are you needing for? Deleting all Paul's contacts. Give him this. And grand in there. Passport's been issued. Trust Mark. If you're honest with these guys, you'd be looked after, mate. The next scene, Mark and Henry take Paul's car to a deserted place and put it into flames. Here Mark encourages Henry that everybody has something bad to hide in their past but Henry can approach him whenever he feels like talking about it. Henry seems mysterious and lost in his thoughts. If you have any issues. But from the next few scenes, from conversation of officers Kate and Graham, also Mark's visit to police headquarters and interaction with his colleagues, including Paul, we are getting the idea that Henry is the person of interest in the teen abduction and murder case. To his record, he refused psychological testing. 
history of violent offences. I'm of the abduction, P28's file was closed. We burnt your car. Let's load him through then. Henry was taken into custody by police twice earlier but released due to lack of evidence. Here the police is trying the procedure called Mr. Big, which is a covert investigation procedure used by undercover police to elicit confessions from suspects in cold cases usually murder. In this film, the cops systematically build up a scenario around the subject Henry. But whether they are able to prove this case or not. Hmm. You better watch the movie. He was waiting by the side of the road, the man standing behind him. We can't discuss that. There's no record of the results here. Out of my fucking head, always. He's a fucking dumb dummy. He wants you to write down your name. Why didn't you fucking tell me? You'll run a background check on you. Henry, whatever your name is. I changed the name years I don't give a fuck. You're still standing there. Yeah, he's anxious. He's unsettled. Our opinion about this film is this. This is based on a real incident and the film portrayed the plot and all main characters reasonably well. Regarding the protagonists, Joel Edgerton as the undercover cop and a worried father is very good. He is a fine actor. But Sean Harris as the culprit is outstanding. His behavior, appearance and expressions did justice to the role. Sometimes calm, sometimes hapless, sometimes disturbed, sometimes eccentric, and on a few occasions mysterious, this guy really lives up to the role. Steve Muzakis as Paul, Alan Dukes as John, Jada Alberts as Kate and Cormac Wright as Mark's son are the other honorable mentions. This film got a good momentum, it was engaging and definitely a good watch.